Hi, I'm Matt and welcome back to Soil Lab. After spending all the last growing season splitting a homeowner's yard in half and mulching half of it and bagging half of it, then presenting that data to you, it's really drummed up some great conversation and I'd really just like to continue that conversation today and address some of the comments that you've had. One of the main questions we got was, does mulching always lead to thatch buildup or thatch accumulation? And the short answer is no, but yes, it certainly can. So let's talk about how we can mulch intentionally to manage against that thatch buildup or against that thatch accumulation. The more frequently you mow, say two or three times a week, the smaller your grass clippings are, and also the younger those grass clippings are. Well, why does that matter? Those younger grass clippings that are smaller act kind of like a candy bar for your soil microorganisms. They have very low carbon and very high nitrogen proportionately, and that fuels that microbial life that breaks them down rapidly. And so those young grass clippings might only persist for weeks or a month at most in a soil if we're mowing frequently and we have a healthy, well-fertilized lawn. Once those grass clippings are in the soil, the bacteria and the fungi and other microorganisms in the soil start immediately consuming those. And as they start consuming those grass clippings, they're gonna break them down into their simpler components. So think about ammonium or nitrate, nitrogen for your plants. We might also see some other elements like potassium leach directly out of that tissue, again, feeding uh, our plants. Now let's say we've been on vacation or we've entrusted the neighbor kid to mow our lawn and maybe it got a little long, it got a little stimmy. Now if we mow and mulch at that point in time and we're putting those larger grass particles that are more woody, those are gonna break down much more slowly. And that's because they're high in carbon and relatively low in nitrogen, again, proportionately. And so those microorganisms have to go and find other nitrogen in the soil to supplement their diet, if you will, to help break down that woodier tissue. I mean, let's just think about this in terms of a forest. If a tree falls on the forest floor, it takes it a long time to break down. Whereas if we have leaves that fall on the forest floor, those are going to break down much more rapidly. It's a really similar concept in that carbon to nitrogen ratio. So now to take that conversation just one step further. We've also probably seen that homeowner in the neighborhood that mulches or even side discharges, but does it every couple of weeks and ends up with these large clumps and piles of grass clippings scattered all about the yard or maybe even windrowed um, from mowing in circles. Not only is that gonna potentially lead to thatch buildup and thatch accumulation, but that also is gonna have a negative impact on the overall turf health by shading out um, the, the living turf underneath and you could end up with those yellow patches, those yellow streaks, or ultimately even dead turf. So if you like a good aesthetic, but you're really looking to leave the bag behind, we really just need to focus on mowing more frequently. The more frequently we mow and mulch, the more rapidly that those grass clippings are gonna break down, and the more we'll reduce thatch accumulation. Maybe we just don't have the time to get out there and mow two or three days a week and we know we're going to be a week or two between mowings. Well, that might be a situation where we throw the bag on the mower and we bag our clippings but keep them on site. And that's going to lead us into one of our next questions. All right, now if you're like me and you went to college and learned about turf probably more than you wanted to, you probably were told that you should always mulch and you should always recycle those clippings to keep that nutrient in your lawn. Now, it's hard to debate that point, but I want us to think just more broadly about that for one moment. Sometimes bagging is gonna be the best option for you. Uh, I know some of my closest friends bag their clippings all the time and it's because they don't like their dogs and their kids tracking clippings into the house and they like that aesthetic. They don't like to see any residual clippings left on, on the surface, especially if they're mowing a little shorter. So instead of thinking about this like we're bagging those clippings and putting them in the dumpster and sending them to the landfill, let's think about keeping those clippings on our property in our own ecosystem. So when we bag clippings, we're probably going to use those, or I'd recommend using those clippings for a beneficial use on your property. What are some of those uses that I'm familiar with? When I choose to bag my clippings, um, I do compost those, and then those composted clippings make it back into a finished compost that I use as an amendment in my garden and my flower beds. Another great use of those grass clippings that you've bagged are to use them as a weed suppressant, as a mulch in between the rows in your garden. And then those are going to naturally break down over time, feeding that microbiological community that is your soil. Well, maybe you don't have a garden to recycle these clippings into for a compost or for weed suppression. Well, we can still use these clippings maybe around the perimeter of your property for weed suppression instead of going around with a non-selective herbicide frequently. 
any way you look at it, if you choose to bag your clippings, either sometimes or all the times, it'd be our recommendation to keep those in your ecosystem. Keep those as a good beneficial use on your property so that you still are recycling that nutrient that you're harvesting from your lawn. One of the other things I'd like to discuss is typically this isn't going to be a one size fits all scenario. Just mulching all season or just bagging all season is not something that I do. And I just want to talk about some of the reasons where it might be beneficial to do one or the other. So what are some of the instances where I might recommend bagging? Um, the one that stands out to me, especially with the really wet spring we've had here in the PNW, is that lawn's wet. I know if I go out there and mulch, I'm going to get clumps, even if I'm mowing frequently. So if I end up with a wet lawn just after the rain, but I need to get it mowed, I might go ahead and bag those clippings and keep them on site just so I don't end up with those clumps, that bad aesthetic that I'm going to have to deal with later. So that's one of the reasons why I might choose to bag in a predominantly mulching program. Another time in our region, especially in the PNW, we have two seed head flushes of annual bluegrass, or you might hear that just called POA. So in the spring of the year, if I get a seed head flush, I might choose to bag so I'm not reseeding that POA. Again, that's a shoulder season thing for me. So it's spring and fall. I see those white seed heads. I might choose to bag and get those into my compost where I can get that compost hot enough to kill those seeds. The other time that I might choose to bag my clippings over mulching those, again, in a predominantly mulching program, is if I've just been on vacation for a period of time and I have let it get kind of stemmy and I want to reduce that likelihood of thatch buildup or a mess. So if I'm cutting more than a third of that leaf surface off, I'm going to go ahead and bag just to keep it clean. And again, I'm going to recycle those clippings on site, not ship them off to the landfill. So those are just a few reasons why you might bag instead of mulch, and I'm sure all of you've got your own reasons as well. So if there's a reason that you'd choose to bag instead of mulch, drop it in the comments below and let's have a conversation about it. So I wanna just touch back on the data a little bit. Now, before I dive into the data, let's remember that there were no visual differences between the bagged or the mulched. In other words, the lawn looked consistent, whether it was bagged or mulched for the entire growing season. And largely, there wasn't a significant difference in nutrient values from the beginning of the study to the end of the study. But some of you noted, and correctly so, that there were some differences, especially during those peak uptake periods. The main differences that I'd like to speak to just briefly are in phosphorus and potassium. So when I say peak uptake period, I really mean in the spring of the year. So in the spring of the year, we did see uh, significantly more phosphorus in the mulch side of the lawn versus the bag side. And the same is true for potassium. Now, a little bit about the why behind that. A lot of times in the early spring, those roots haven't grown to, to phosphorus yet. And so as that phosphorus is being recycled from every single living cell in that plant as ATP and ADP, that's providing supplemental phosphorus in the zone that we were sampling in that top six inches of the soil. Now, what about that potassium? Earlier in the video, I mentioned that potassium leaches out of leaves. So early in the spring, that potassium also that doesn't really move that fast or far in the soil was leaching from those grass clippings. And that's because potassium is potassium is potassium in the plant. It never gets combined organically like nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur do. But ultimately, there were no visual differences throughout the study between bagged or mulched. So, as we're doing this follow-up video, what are some of the main takeaways? Um, I'm gonna sound a little bit like a lawyer, but there's not one size fits all. There's not one answer for everybody. Really, when it comes to bagging versus mulching, we can manage that for a good aesthetic, manage against thatch accumulation while keeping that nutrient on site and incorporate both methods. So bagging versus mulching or any combination of is really gonna be a decision at your property in your unique situation. I'm hopeful that some of the conversation today helps you drive those decisions and think about when you could incorporate one method or the other, bagging or mulching, into your own mowing program. Well, thanks for listening. Hopefully you'll like, subscribe, and comment below with the strategies that you're using, and I'll look forward to seeing you again in the lab.